So hopefully, you know, this offseason we find a way to get better and, you know, add some cases. The biggest name in free agency made a decision. Paul Court has agreed to deal with the Sixers. And, like, it's going to be put up or shut up time. This is the team. This is the moment. This is the time. You're not going to have chances like this. I hope that me and Joel and Tyrese get on the same page early as possible. I already look at this big three and say that they have more talent than what Phoenix had last year. This team could compete for a title right now. Philly fans, what's up? It's your boy, PG8, not 13. Cut the 13 out. Shout out Warren, that was an awesome. We gotta work oh, on that signature yeah. though at the bottom. PG. Oh, PG. Well, I had to work on my signature. My signature was terrible, <laughs> so I, I have some tips. Uh, Paul George, he was officially introduced though in Philadelphia this morning, three weeks after agreeing to that four-year, $212 million contract extension. The PG-13 era, it's behind us. He's now rocking number eight in honor of Kobe Bryant. Here's PG on his role with the new team. I know what I'm out there to do, um, and that's ultimately put the ball in the basket and try to guard the best player on the other team. At times, I know that during the course of a year, it's going to be a long season. But the three of us, I think, can carry a, a ton of that workload. I look forward to playing with uh, such a presence in Joel. Um, and I don't think I've played with someone at that level, at that size, that dominates. Um, so really looking forward to what that looks like on the floor. From a legacy standpoint, you know, obviously if we win and, and, and get past the second round, <laughs> uh, you know, then we're on to something good. And hopefully it's it's a window that we can keep winning and winning at a high level and, and, and being successful. Um, and so no better place to do it, to win in, uh, than, than Philadelphia. There's really no other place, you know, um, I wanted to align with and try to win in. He came in with some jokes there. All right. Mm -hmm. Paul George, he may be entering his 15th season, but as you know, Janae, he's still really effective. He's yes. one of three players to average 20 points while shooting 40% on threes, 90% on free throws last year. He's also consistent, averaging at least 20 points per game in each of his last nine seasons. You can see where those numbers stack up there, and he does. He sounds eager to take his next steps in his career to help Philly get past the second round for the first time in <laughs> over 20 joke. years. Yes, as he made sure to mention there. But let's, let's get into the tangibles here. Here, Tim, what exactly does Philly need from Paul George? Well, he mentioned it, put the ball in the basket in, in a high-pressure environment because yeah. that's what Philadelphia is. But I think, listen, just in terms of technically on the court, where he really helps them is his ability to catch and shoot from deep. He is a pure three-point shooter off the catch. 46% on catch and shoot last year from the three-point line. To put that in perspective, the two guys that occupy the three and the four spot for them a year ago, primarily Kelly Oubre, who they re-signed and, and has been very good for them, shot 31% percent on catch and shoot threes. Tobias Harris, who is no longer there, shot 36 percent. So you see what an improvement that is. He can space the floor off of Embiid, who draws double teams. He can space the floor off of transition when Tyrese Maxey is pushing and using that speed to draw guys back to the lane. Paul George's ability to blend in and fit because of his ability to play with the ball or without the ball. That is where he's going to fit in so well for them. And he also can run the offense when Embiid is out. You know, he's going to miss probably 12, 15, 18, 20 games in the regular season. Mm. That's Embiid's track record. Last year when that happened, they were under 500. It cost them four or five spots in the standings in the Eastern Conference, the games he missed in the regular season. Paul George can help carry some of that load when Embiid is out. So, he's, listen, he's a great offensive player. Yeah. He's a great defensive player. He alluded to it. He's going to be asked to do both in Philadelphia for sure. And Tim, you highlighted one aspect about Paul George, but I want to talk about the big picture because Paul George is the perfect blend of all the running mates that we've seen Joel Embiid have over the last few years. Okay. He's got the size of Ben Simmons. He's got the shooting, as Tim astutely pointed out, of James Harden even more improved at that 46% catch and shooting. But then he's also got the late game ISO bucket bag of Jimmy Butler. So he's a perfect combination on top of what he's asked to do, particularly on the floor. Off ball, off the wing. He's one of the most effective scorers. You saw that number. Nine straight seasons of 20 points per game. He doesn't always need the ball in his hands. He's used to playing alongside another superstar. And now he's got one plus one in maxi two. Now they're a big three. And so, yeah, their window to me is now because of what he's been able to show his skill set be. And it's literally a perfect blend yeah. of everything that we've seen in the Phillies past. Let's dive into that championship window as you alluded to, Zach. Because Paul George also said that, you know what? 
the windows open. How long do you think that window is going to be open now that they do have a, a true big three here, Zach? As long as that big three is healthy, and that's always a question with Joel Embiid, and together, you can rearrange the pieces around them. Philly has done a great job this offseason, including picking up Reggie Jackson today, according to Woj, yep. filling out their roster around those three. But that is a perfectly calibrated big three. They all do different things. They occupy every part of the positional spectrum. There isn't a lot of overlap between them. Two of them, Paul George and Joel Embiid, are elite defenders. The window is open. Paul George chuckled about not getting past the second round. If anybody should know how hard it is to get past the second round, it's a former Clipper, and it oh, took them Zach. a long time just to get out of the second <laughs> round. And Paul George was the most important player who got the Clippers over that hump. It's not easy to win a second round playoff series in the East, not if you're going to face New York, Milwaukee, yep. Boston, Cleveland, Indiana, Orlando. Like, it's nothing to scop at. That's a big accomplishment, but the time is now. We spent a lot of every offseason talking about the Sixers. This player out, this player in. Yes. Oh my God, what a signing, what a trade. Who's on the trade block? Enough. The time is now. This is a team that can win big, so let's see it. Every single year is like new co star, like new players. And when you start looking at teams that have won, you know, whether it's Golden State, Boston this year, Denver last year, those guys have been together for a long time. And then they just added a few other pieces that were able to take them over the top. He's right. The process has included a lot of what have you done for me lately, player in, player out, and clearly he longs for stability and B does in Philly. So, Tim, do you think that the 76ers, they have finally gotten the right co-stars in place with Paul George and Tyrese Maxey here? If, if they haven't figured it out with this group, they never will because they have everything they need now. I mean, Tyrese Maxey's emergence over the last year and a half or so, he's elevated himself to a legitimate star offensive player in this league, and he's also a guy that showed you a year ago what he's capable of in the postseason. He's not affected by the pressure. He plays with a, with a bounce and a joy about his game that I think made Joel Embiid relax even more, so they figured out that chemistry, and now you go out and you add a guy like Paul George with his versatility and his ability to score really against any defender to guard any position on the floor this is it this is the time I understand the Boston Celtics are the measuring stick they're not just in the east for the entire league right now I get that but when you go out and you add Paul George to what they currently have and re-sign some of the pieces they did and, and Zach pointed out they've even brought in some veteran acquisitions you should be expecting a championship like anything short of that to me should be considered a disappointment when you add a guy like Paul George to go with Joe Willoughby to Tyrese Maxey. There's no question about it. The time is now. There have been 41 parades in the NBA since the Sixers last had one. They're ready. The city is ready. <laughs> They're ready to erupt. They love their Eagles. The Phillies are great right now. But I'll tell you what, winning a championship in Philadelphia to 76ers, I don't know what could compare to that right now in Philadelphia sports. It is a basketball city, and they are starving for a champion. They might finally have enough pieces to get that done. If Joel Embiid and the Sixers finally get to where they haven't been since Allen Iverson was there, the single biggest reason will be Daryl Morey selecting Tyrese Maxey and Tyrese Maxey developing into a star. It changed everything for the Philadelphia 76ers. This is his fourth season coming up now with Joel Embiid. There's never been any trade rumblings. There's never been any drama. There's never been any questions about his free throw shooting or if he wants the ball late in big games. There's never been any coming and going with Tyrese Maxey. This is the first real shot at a stable, long-term running mate for Joel Embiid. And oh, by the way, he maybe not happily, but contentedly put off his extension so the Sixers could have enough cap room to sign Paul George. Joel's right. The roster turmoil has hurt their team. It's hurt their chemistry. It's hurt them in the biggest moments. But Tyrese Maxey is their ticket to Joel Embiid having a long extended prime of championship contention in Philly. If they're able to pull it off, if they're able to stay together long term, yeah. that draft pick and Tyrese Maxey's development will have changed the entire franchise. I just want to underscore Paul George is in Philadelphia because of a decision Tyrese Maxey made for the team. Because of that. Chip. Yeah, and what I love about this conversation is the way that Joel Embiid started it, talking about stability. There's no stability in the NBA until you get your team right. 
And it's interesting because I always bring up these analogies from my time being a Houston Rockets fan under Daryl Morey. Now you have Daryl Morey, and he will cycle through teams and stars until he gets the team right. The team is right. The team is here. Yep. It's arrived. And what I love about this team is that it's truly balanced. Paul George, 34 years old, I believe. Joel Embiid, 30 years old. Tyrese Maxey, 23. The runway is there where you have veteran leadership. You have someone in their prime of MVP candidacy in Joel Embiid. And then you've got the future in Tyrese Maxey. The balance is there on the floor. The balance is there with experience. The balance is there just overall. So this is the time for the Sixers to show up and to show out. And so if we're looking at a window, you look at the median. To me, it's Joel Embiid. He's 30. Getting to 35, you want to say that you've won a championship or two. You yep. won another MVP. Those are his goals, but it will come through the teammates that he has alongside to the right and left of him. And that's Maxi, and that's also uh, Paul George. And to me, what I love about this is, like, it doesn't get better in the NBA. The way that the NBA is designed, things like this are not supposed to happen anymore. Yeah. Having big threes, but they have it. Right. They have the offense. They have the defense. You have to make sure that that expectation is met over the next few years. Right. It comes with the sacrifice from a Tyrese Maxey, a Jalen Brunson. We're seeing these moves be made so that teams can be better, but the time is now for Philadelphia, and now they just have some little perimeter tinkering questions, like how many power forwards do they have on the <laughs> roster? The answer is uh, not many. All right.